King, actually dead, Victor, finally, finally is Loki, return, explain, see the string plus the save button, thank you, so. Hey, welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. Phase 5 of the MCU has officially begun with Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania. This movie introduced us to the Multiverse of Saga's big bad, Kang the Conqueror. But is this the same Kang that we're actually going to see take on the Avengers and Avengers the Kang Dynasty and in Secret Wars? And if so, where did he go after being sucked into his power core in Quantumania? Well, we think the second post credit scene may have just revealed that information. We think that Kang, who did not die, and he's hiding on Earth in the early 20th century. Or are they talking about that? Victor Time the guy from the post credit scene. That's right. In this post credit scene for Quantumania, we saw a scene from Loki Season 2. This scene featured the Kang variant, Victor Timely. And after this scene, the screen reads, Kang will return. Now sure, this could be in reference to one of the many variants that we saw in the first post credit scene, but... I don't think so. I think this is in reference to this specific Kang from Quantumania. Now, in the comics, Victor Timely is a Kang that traveled back in time to the early 20th century. This was after he suffered an embarrassing defeat in Avengers Annual 21. Kang travels back in time to 20th century Wisconsin, and it is there that he establishes the town of Timely. He becomes the mayor of the town and creates an impressive and innovative company that rapidly advances technology, specifically his time-traveling technology, which he seems to be giving a presentation for in the post credit scene. He's got an old Thomas Edison vibe about him, and that's because the whole thing is a facade. You see, in the comics, Victor Timely isn't really a variant of Kang the Conqueror. He's a disguise. And how? So we think we're seeing something similar play out here in the MCU. Following an embarrassing defeat by Ant-Man and the Wasp, Kang finds himself falling through a time vortex and crash landing in the early 20th century. Avengers Endgame confirmed that via the quantum realm, one can travel through time and universes. Tony Stark's time machine gave the Avengers the ability to control where they go. But with Kang being sucked into his power core, he could have landed anywhere in the time stream. Now keep in mind that his power core, when paired with his chair, gave Kang the ability to travel through all of existence. The power core is what provides the power. And the chair was used to dial in wherever he wants to go, like the quantum suits in Endgame. In the comics, Timely Wisconsin is quantum entangled with Kang City of Chronopolis. Chronopolis being the inspired Kang's quantum realm kingdom that we see in Quantumania. So, with these two places being entangled in the comics, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that they're entangled in the movies as well. This quantum entanglement could have been formed when Kang was sucked into the power core and he randomly landed in 20th century Wisconsin. This could have left behind a quantum connection between the two places, similar to how Scott was linked to the quantum realm and Janet after he went subatomic in the first Ant-Man movie. You think when you were down there you may have entangled with her? Hank, I would never do that. I respect you too much. Quantum entanglement, Scott. But person, I thought when Kang got sucked into that power core, he, he died. Oh, buddy, there's no way he's dead, and the movie basically confirmed that he survived. In our first post credit scene, we get the MCU debut of the Council of Kangs. We meet characters like Immortus, Ramatut, and maybe the Scarlet Centurion? We've actually got a video breaking down that post credit scene, so be sure to check it out. Anyway, in that post credit scene, we hear Ramatut ask, are you sure he's dead? This is the second time the movie questions if Kang really died. Just a few minutes earlier, we hear Scott eerily ask himself, we did beat him, right? I mean, yeah, that's what happened. He was getting out, and he didn't get out. I think, but even if these scenes weren't in the film, I'd still be certain that Kang wasn't dead, because when a time-traveling multiversal villain gets sucked into a power core meant for multiversal travel, he's not dead. His journey has only just begun. And then, when the filmmakers go out of their way to make sure the audience questions whether or not Kang really died, you know they're setting up his return. Plus, we've got Avengers the Kang Dynasty coming. And sure, they could introduce another variant of Kang that goes by the name Kang, but what fun would that be? We've already met this Kang. They've developed this character. We've seen his motives and his disdain for his variants. The groundwork has been laid for this Kang to have a revenge-filled return. A Kang who was banished by his variants and seeks to burn them out of time. A Kang who will have a bloodlust for the Ant family. And I'm calling it now. Kang is going to return, and he will brutally murder either Scott, Hope, Janet, or Hank almost immediately. And I think it's really important that despite the MCU existing with the fast multiverse, with infinite versions of every character, it's important that they don't allow that to take away from the stakes. Having another Kang be the villain of Kang Dynasty, to me, would feel like the Quantumania Kang was just a waste. Mr. Wayne didn't want you to think that he was deliberately wasting your time. Just accidentally wasting it. <laughs> it's very good, somehow. Accidentally. Now, in the Loki series, we met He Who Remains, another Kang variant. 
a variant who successfully burned his variants out of time and won the multiverse award. A Kang who organized the multiverse into the sacred timeline by his own design. Which is exactly what the Kang in Quantumania aspires to do. We even got a glimpse of what could be his plans for a sacred timeline, which gave me real Death Star plan from Attack of the Clones vibes. Every sign points to Kang the Conqueror and He Who Remains being not merely variants of one another, but the exact same variant. In Loki, we hear He Who Remains say, I've been dubbed many names by many people. A ruler, a conqueror. And when He Who Remains presents Loki and Sylvie with the choice of replacing him as the rulers of all time, or killing him and allowing the sacred timeline to break into chaos, he says, You either take over and my life's work continues, or you plunge your blade in my chest and an infinite amount of me start another multiversal war, and I just end up right back here anyways. We think that Quantumania's Kang the Conqueror is the Kang who will end up back there anyway and become He Who Remains. Only this time, it's likely the Avengers will stop him before he can become He Who Remains. Or we could see him successfully win the Multiversal War, defeat all his variants and the Avengers, and then become He Who Remains. And then Loki and Sylvie can lead the Avengers to him at the Citadel at the end of time. There we'll find He Who Remains beginning to piece together the sacred timeline and pruning variant timelines from existence, including the problematic Universe 616, the main MCU, and the Avengers just can't allow that to happen. So what's all that got to do with Victor Timely? Well, we think that Victor Timely could be just the beginning to Kang's conquering of the multiverse. If Victor Timely is Kang the Conqueror, then that means that he escaped from the quantum realm and will hit the ground running with his plan to conquer the multiverse. But with him being limited by the technologies of the 20th century, it will take time for him to gather and create all the necessary elements he'll need to begin his conquest. And he doesn't even have his time chair or the Kang suit, both of which play a major role in the creation of his quantum kingdom and quantum mania. He doesn't even have a box of scraps. Right? So, we could see Kang spend the next century on Earth preparing for his takeover. But Kang's just a man. How can he prevent himself from dying of old age? Well, I assume that one of Kang's first projects will be developing technology that uses his understanding of time travel to keep himself young. Similar to what the Avengers did in Endgame when testing their time machine. Let me guess, he turned into a bit. It's the EPR paradox. Instead of pushing Lang through time, he might have wound up pushing time through Lang. It's tricky, dangerous. Somebody could have cautioned you against it. Why people start to wonder why this guy does not age? Great question, and that's actually addressed in the comics. As decades pass, Kang eventually abandons the Victor Timely alias and moves on to Victor Timely Jr., Victor Timely son. Now, we theorized in this video that as the 21st century approaches, we could see Kang abandon the Timely alias and take on the Mr. Griffin persona. Mr. Griffin being the CEO of Kang Enterprises, which we saw a hint at in the Loki series, meaning that Kang, or Mr. Griffin, is likely the mysterious buyer of Avengers Tower in Spider-Man Homecoming. But really, how can you have Avengers Tower if variants didn't exist when Spider-Man Homecoming took place? Hark said himself that traveling to the past does not change the future. That's right, traveling to the past does not change the future, it creates variant timelines. So back to the future is a bunch of language. And Spider-Man Homecoming takes place before Avengers Endgame, which means that it takes place before the Avengers created a variant timeline where Loki escapes with the Tesseract. That means that there shouldn't be any Kang variants other than he who remains in existence when Spider-Man Homecoming took place. But if Kang the Conqueror, Victor Timely, Mr. Griffin, and he who remains are all the exact same variant, then perhaps their presence has been a constant in the sacred timeline and they were never pruned. Because they don't lead to the variant Kangs who threaten the timeline. They lead to he who remains. Reincarnation. I miss the six rainbow candies in the glove. There's definitely worse simpler times. But don't worry, we here at Screen Crest are here to help explain everything the best we can, provide lots of fun theories along the way. So, let us know, do you think Victor Timely is Quantumania's Kang? And are they both destined to become He Who Remains? Let me know in the comments below where you can add me on Twitter. And if you're new here, please subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. Just gonna like this video for eight days, see you guys. Bye.